everybody. I hope that this is working and I'm live. I am uh, going live today. I just want to make sure I'm, I've got my computer here and I just want to make sure that um, I'm live. Make sure we're streaming. It says I am. I don't see it on the computer. I want to look at my computer because I can't always see the comments that come up. Um, oh, hey, Ellen. How are you? So, okay, I'm live and I can see who's here, so this is great. Um, all right, so I am going to talk today about the five P's of personal branding. And I'm going to go ahead and get started because it is 10 and I don't want to delay for everybody who is on time. And what I want to do is just do a quick introduction about who I am and why I'm here. I'm Robin Graham. I am the host of this group and I created this group simply to give us a space to learn about personal branding, learn about creating a successful business, but also build um, relationships, network, that kind of thing, and just support each other, hold each other up. We're all like-minded women wanting to achieve goals, and I wanted to have a good place for us to be able to do that. So that's why I created the group. So I am a business coach, personal branding strategist, and um, host of the Second Base podcast, and soon to be published author. My book will publish in March called You, Me, and Anxiety. And I will be keeping you guys posted all on those details as we come closer to that date. So without um, anything else being said, I'm gonna jump in real quick and talk about the five piece of personal branding. So I made some notes. So if you see me glancing down, that's because I don't wanna miss anything. I have several key points that I wanna make sure we hit home today. So the five piece of personal branding are your passion, purpose, perfectionism, procrastination, and paralysis. That last one sounds pretty terrifying, right? But a lot of times we get into that place we'll talk about that in a little bit. So first let's talk about your passion. What fuels you? What lights you up? What gets you so excited that you are just ready to, to move and take action? What gives you those butterflies in your stomach that you can feel just lights you up and you're ready to do that thing or make that thing happen? What is that thing that makes you feel that way? What is your passion? your passion rolls into your purpose. And what do I mean by that? And how do we get to that point? When we look at our purpose, our purpose becomes what it is based on our values and our visions and our passions. And when we look at those three things together, that's what gives us that calling or the signs of our calling and our purpose and that that thing that we're meant to do that thing that we're able to solve a problem for other people for whether it's a product business a service business whether you're a coach or a, a healthcare practitioner whatever that is that purpose comes from that core of your values your visions and your passions so how do you know what your values are? Sometimes people get confused about values and, it, and it's easy to do because we think we have values that are a certain set, but then we kind of think, well, maybe this is, but so, and sometimes there's confusion. So how can you look at that? How can you decide what your core values are and where you want to be, have that focus and where you want to always make sure that your business and your life is aligned with those values? So. Um, if you don't know, uh, have a list of va values handy, you can go to, G I think it's jamescleary.com. He wrote um, Atomic Habits, and he has a great list on his website of, I think, maybe 50 values that you can go through. And what I always recommend is make a list of, like, say, 10, 10, 10 to 15. And then as you make that list, then you're going to narrow it down. There's going to be overlap. Some of those things are going to be very similar, and you can then move some of them off of the list and bump the others up. So come down to three to five max core values that you really want to always stay aligned with, values that you're not gonna waver on, that they're going to be the heart and center of your business and your life going forward. So that's values. Your visions, when you think about your visions, where do you see yourself in the future? Who do you see yourself working with? When you're sitting quietly, what visions do you get? What visions do you see? And I'm not 
saying like woo-woo visions, things like that. But you know when you were a child and you were dreaming about who you were gonna be when you grew up, or maybe now you're sitting and you're, you see something and you're like, gosh, you know, I would really love to do that. What do you see yourself doing? And who do you see yourself interacting with? Where do you see yourself doing this? And how do you see yourself doing this? Those become your visions and they're going to overlap with your passions, your values, somewhere along the way. Something's gonna resonate where the three things come together and you can say, aha, this is it. And that be, that's how you find your purpose. That's where you can find that underlying purpose that's gonna push you forward, that you're gonna be able to you know, take that, that leap into serving other people. Once you find your purpose, you would think the sky's the limit, right? But what happens? We start working on it, we start creating, and perfectionism hits us. That need to be perfect. That, that need to make sure that everything is perfect before we take action. That need to make sure that everything's perfect before we go live, before we launch a program, before we launch our website. Everything has to be perfect. And what happens when we're in that place of having to be perfect? We start to procrastinate. Because at the end of the day, perfectionism is impossible. And the reality is nobody cares if we're perfect or not. We can show up with dark circles and bags under our eyes because we've worked late every night of the week. We can show up as we are, as us, as our real selves. And the more authentic, the more real, the less perfect we are, the more we accept our imperfections and present ourselves as imperfect, the more we're gonna be able to connect with other people, those people that we're meant to serve. People don't want perfection because most people realize it's not attainable. We, we just can't attain it. It's just something that is out of reach. God is perfect, we are not. As humans, we are here to serve, but we're not meant to serve perfectly. And that's a really important thing to always hold in the back of your mind that it is so much better to take action and let it be messy, let it be imperfect, than to make sure everything's perfect and never get anything done. One of my friends always says, done is better than perfect. And the real reality is that's true, especially if you wanna start a business and create a personal brand. Your personal brand is what other people think, say, and feel about you. And if people are thinking and saying and feeling that you're so perfect, you're gonna appear off limits to them. So you don't want to appear perfect. You want to appear real, authentic. And don't let that thought of having to have everything perfect hold you back from taking action and implementing the things that you need to implement to move the needle forward on your business. People are out there waiting for you to show up for them. And if you're waiting until you're perfect, you're doing them a disservice because they need your help. They want you and they need you. And so if you're waiting until you're perfect, they're never gonna have, be able to have you and that's not cool because they need you. Okay, so what happens when we get in that cycle of procrastination? We start to analyze everything. We start to compare ourselves to everybody online. We let imposter syndrome come in and fear and doubt and all of those feelings that were caused by perfectionism start spiraling out of control and we sit in a place of paralysis. We're stuck. You can call it analysis paralysis because a lot of times people sit in that place and they're just looking at everything. They're looking at all the numbers. Well, okay, so many people like this, so maybe I should do this. Well, no, those people like that. Maybe I should go to that platform. Or that person's really successful and she's over there, so I'm going to go over there and I'm going to do what she's doing. And we get into this cycle of comparison and all that does is make us stay stuck longer. So it's really important to do check-ins. Check-ins with yourself and ask yourself, who is putting those demands of perfectionism on you? Who is it that has told you you have to be perfect? Who set that bar so high for you that you think you have to be perfect and that's the only way you're gonna achieve success is through perfection? Chances are, I'm willing to bet, the person that put that level of perfectionism on you, that demand for perfectionism, is you. When you reflect back on those questions, that perfectionism is coming from in here. And it could have come from childhood trauma. 
It could have come from childhood expectations. It could have come from that need of approval. It could have come from many, many places. But until we address those mindset issues and those challenges with having to be present as a perfectionism, as a perfectionist, we're not going to be able to move the needle forward on our business. So let's talk about how we can navigate this. Your thoughts create your results. I'm going to say that one more time. Your thoughts create your results. So how does that work? Here's the thing. When you have a thought, that thought is going to create an emotion or a feeling. And that emotion or feeling is then going to trigger your emotions, or I'm sorry, your <laughs> that thought is then going to trigger your behaviors and your actions. So you have your thought is going to influence your feelings and emotions, and those are going to influence your actions and behaviors. So if you're sitting here thinking, I have to be perfect, I have to be perfect, that has to be perfect before I can launch it. This has to be perfect before I can show it to anyone else. I have to be perfect before I'm going to go live on video. If you're thinking those thoughts and you're thinking, what's going to happen? Those are going to create feelings of anxiety, fear, self-doubt, comparison, all those feelings of inadequacy. And when you have those feelings, what's going to happen? You're not going to take action because you're afraid. And anytime you're afraid, we're going to stay stagnant. We're going to stay right where we are. So it's a, we have to navigate that mindset in order to be able to take effective intentional action to move the needle forward on our business. So um, I'm just taking a quick look at my notes to make sure that I covered everything I wanted to cover about that. But I'm going to go back to that original question that I asked um, a minute ago when I said, if you are thinking about who is putting that demand on you for perfection, and as you think about those thoughts, as they come into play, catch them and then change them. You have to challenge them and change them. And when I say challenge them, so when I say who is demanding perfectionism and you think of it as, oh gosh, yeah, that's me. Mm -hmm. That's me. I'm doing that to myself. Then ask yourself, why? Why do you think you need to be perfect? And why is it that you think other people need you to be perfect? Challenge those thoughts of the need to be perfect, perfect, perfect. I can't talk today. Perfect. And from there, you can then change those thoughts to, it's okay if I'm not perfect. It's okay if I show up as I am because I'm here to serve. And if I'm here to serve, there are people out there waiting for me to serve them. If we have a calling on our hearts, chances are that there's a signal being sent from someone else that needs that, that needs that service, that needs whatever it is we have to offer, that solution to their problem. So it all comes full circle, right? It always comes full circle. But I have to say that being imperfect is not a ticket to or a permission to just be messy, inconsistent, or lazy because those things aren't going to move the needle forward on your business either. But the key here is to just be able to accept imperfection and then move forward to move the needle forward on your business or your life. Maybe you haven't even started your business. Maybe you're still working through what your purpose is and what your calling is and all of those things. But you don't even have to be perfect when it comes to defining your purpose at first. Because the reality is when you get, when you get into the trenches of entrepreneurship, things shift. You discover new things. You work with people that then inspire you that, to, and help you realize that, oh my gosh, I actually have this skill set too. So now I can transition or, or add that into my playlist too. So it's really important to, I keep saying that, it's really important. This is all really important. This whole mindset thing is, is really so important because that becomes part of the foundation for your long-term success because our thoughts create our results. And if we are in that messy, mucky place of walking through molasses so that we're so stuck we can't take action, we're not gonna be able to produce results. 
Okay, so I always refer back to that, my, my what I call the success equation, which is mindset plus strategy plus action, and the three have to come together in order to produce results. So when I say you don't have to be perfect, I'm guessing that your shoulders dropped away from your ears, maybe your breathing kind of slowed, maybe your thoughts are a little clearer, maybe you can feel some creativity coming in, because when we drop that expectation of perfectionism, we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. We start to feel hope and that creativity starts to build. And when we have creativity and our creativity starts to build, our energy starts to build. And when we have that, we start to create momentum to take that intentional action. And when I talk about intentional action, I'm returning, referring to action that is, is triggered from a strategy. So we all have goals, probably some big audacious goals, whether you're just starting your entrepreneurial journey or you have been an entrepreneur for quite a while, you have goals, you have a mission, you have, you have an end mark where you want to be, where you're gonna actually put your stake in the ground and claim success. I did it, I made it, and I accomplished this. When we think about those, there's, we start at point A and then Z is that big audacious goal. But there's a whole lot in between there that has to be done in order for that Z to become a reality. So that this is where strategy comes into play. So we have a big, a big goal. We have this big thing we want to do. We have these things we want to accomplish in order to get there. But how do we set ourselves up with a strategy effectively to do that? So I'd like to call it little landmarks. Our landmarks are little goals. Little goals that are going to get us to that to the point where we can take that gigantic leap into that accomplishment of that goal. So baby steps into a big leap. And when I talk about that strategy, that strategy becomes everything from your website, your brand messaging, your, your personal brand, your branding, which is how you differentiate yourself, how you control that perception that other people have of you, how you really show your personality and who you are and, and build your reputation. And then your brand identity, your brand assets are those things like your logo, your color palette, and all those things have to be cohesive and they all have to be consistent across all of your platforms, whatever you're putting out messaging. And when you start to do that and start to create that strategy of how you're going to create your content, build your platforms, and build relationships, those strategies be become part of those mini goals, the baby steps. And if you think of it as a long car ride with your kids, and I, I got this analogy from Tanya Dalton. She wrote the book On Purpose, which if you haven't read that book, fabulous. But so you take a string and you know your, your kids are in the car and they're like, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Wait, where are we? How, long, how much longer? You know, the, the, the nightmare of a, of a long car drive with little kids. So anyway, sometimes big kids because I'm guilty of it too. But you take a string and you put it, attach it to both sides of the car. And then you take pictures of landmarks that you're gonna see along the way. Maybe it's cities, maybe it's town, maybe it's you know some big monument, who knows? You put pictures of that across the string. So home at one end and the final destination on the other end. So A to Z. And then you put the landmarks, pictures of them across that um, string and take a clothespin. Put the clothespin right at start, it's at home. But then you're gonna gradually move that clothespin every time you reach one of those points. So just like having those landmarks on a road trip, you're gonna have landmarks in your business to reach your goals. And that becomes part of that strategy. And the important thing is to break it down into small bite-sized chunks. So 30, like take 30 days, or what I say, I like to say use threes. So if you take three goals for 90 days, so you can do three things in three months. So you give yourself that grace that you don't have to accomplish 10 things. You can accomplish three things, but it gives you that permission and that time to dedicate to those three things to make sure that you're gonna accomplish them to be able to then move yourself forward. If we get so inundated with just that end goal, we lose sight of everything that has to happen. It's a journey to get there and we have to make sure that we have those landmarks set so that we can achieve those first and really make sure that that strategy is creating a foundation that's gonna help us get to where we're going, but build so that 
it lasts long term. Okay, that is the end of what I had to say today as far as the five P's of personal branding. I hope that in this quick 20 minute little training, you were able to get something out of it that if nothing else, you can remember going forward that it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be action. And if you have the positive mindset and a strategy, that action becomes easier and you can propel, propel yourself forward to the next level in your business. So if anyone has any questions, shoot them at me through the comments here. Um, ask away right now, or um, you can always DM me on Instagram at the Robin Graham or drop me an email robin at the Robin Graham.com. If you are curious about what it's like to coach with me, you can book a free discovery call and we can chat about what your needs are, what your goals are, where you're at in your business currently and where you want to be in your business. Now is a great time to start thinking about 2022. Um, it's not too late to, to map out those goals and to really lay that the the strategic plan for what you're going to do in 2022 to help you move towards those goals. Sometimes goals take several years. Sometimes they take only a few months. It depends on how big and audacious that goal is. But if you're interested in learning more about what it's like to coach with me, book a free strategy call. You can just go to my website, therobingraham.com. We'll jump on a call. They usually take about a half an hour, maybe 45 minutes, and we can talk about what you need and what your goals are and how I can help you reach them. All right. Thanks everybody for being here. I look forward to connecting and I hope that you took some little piece of wisdom away from this training and that you can go out now and start creating that strategic plan and take intentional action. Have a great day. Fabulous Friday. Fabulous weekend.